So we'll talk about two things today. Both will be very short discussions, but hopefully very memorable. The first thing is inner products and component spaces. Suppose we have a basis B. And let's suppose we have an inner product with respect to which these are not even necessarily orthogonal or anything like that, an arbitrary basis. And we have two vectors, A and B. And A is, has coefficients alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3 with respect to this basis. So it's and the vector B has coefficients beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. And the question is, what does A dot B look like in terms of the three alphas and the three betas? What sort of arithmetic combination do you have to evaluate to get the answer for A dot B? So it's perfectly okay. In fact, you should maybe pick your favorite example. Say, these are polynomials. These are polynomials. And this is the integral from minus 1 to 1. It's just that that's kind of what I'm doing, but for any inner product and any kind of vector. OK, well, let's just plug in what the expansions are. I think that's good. So all we did was substitute these expansions into the inner product. And now we're going to, we're actually not going to do it, we'll just talk about it, a massive foil. Do you guys agree with me? Why? Because the inner product is distributive. So that's actually all we really need here is the distributive property. We definitely don't need positive definiteness for this discussion. And if we're particularly careful, we can even get away without commutativity. In which case, we'll give up the symmetry of the resulting matrix. But let's just imagine, how many terms will I have when I multiply it all out? Nine, right? There are three terms in this sum. There are three terms in this sum. So it's like multiplying A plus B plus C by D plus E plus F. So nine terms. One of them will be alpha 1, alpha 1, beta 1, times E1 dotted with E1. And another one will be alpha 1, beta 2, times E1 dotted with E2, just using distributivity and alpha 1 beta 3 times E1 dotted with E3. Do you see it's those nine terms? So I just mentioned a third of them right there. There will be corresponding three terms for this and corresponding three terms for this. So you can almost write them down as a typical term would be alpha i beta j and that would multiply EI dotted with EJ. I've resisted using indicial notation until now. And so I'll put a summation sign here. Over all I and J, they go from one to three each. Is it okay to combine all nine terms this way? And do you see from experience of having done this two or three times already in this course, that it's just a matrix product involving this very matrix. That's what happens if I think of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 as a vector in R3. Alpha is the components of A with respect to this basis. In other words, alpha is A in component space. You can say that it's the representation, representation of A in component space, but it really you can just say A alpha is A in component space. And beta, you guessed it. OK, so this sum of nine terms is nothing else but alpha transpose that same matrix M beta. And that this, more than our previous discussion, tells you why this is called the inner product matrix. It's the matrix that absorbs all of the information about the inner product. So once you calculate this matrix, you never have to evaluate another inner product directly for that space in that inner product. All you need to do is whatever vectors you need to dot, decompose them with respect to a basis, to with respect to that same basis, right? This, is, this should really be m dot b, right? That's for this particular basis. In a different basis, it would be 
different vectors E1, E2, and E3, so it'll be a different matrix, but still symmetric. Okay? Let me erase it because it doesn't look nice. <laughs> but, but it really needs to be there because this matrix depends on both the inner product and the choice of basis. And that choice of basis is the most interesting part of it, I think. But what we have found out is just like in the case of linear transformations, inner products in component spaces are represented by matrix multiplication. It's an entirely uh, different kind of matrix multiplication. In the case of linear transformations, it was just the vector times the pre-image of the vector. But here it's the matrix and components of one vector on one side and the components of the other vector as a transpose on the other side. So different in terms of the mechanics. But what's the same is much more interesting. What's the same is that it's once again represented by a matrix. So it seems that invariably linear algebra sorts of things are represented by matrix products when you go into component spaces. And if you learn matrix multiplication not so long ago and it seemed a little bit awkward because why do we need to do this sort of thing and it's not the way I would have defined matrix multiplication, the more and more you discover how it naturally appears when you do straightforward calculations convinces you over time that no, that's the right, that's the right definition for matrix multiplication. The only awkward thing here is having this transpose because it, it breaks this beautiful symmetry between alpha and beta. One is why transposed and the other one not. Well, that's the only way to make the formalism of matrix multiplication work. But it's a bit of a bummer. You know, someone like me who really cares about what equations look like, and I think everybody should care what equations look like, when you get a new operation, an extra operation, uh, in, my, in my book, that's not the prettiest thing. But it is what it is. So you need transposes to make inner products work together with matrix multiplication. Now, why does this prove that this matrix is positive definite? So given three numbers, three alphas, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, or in n dimensions, n numbers, when you evaluate this combination, what you should think back to, in a way, is the vector that these components represent. So given an alpha like this, form a vector A like this. This will be back to, you're back to your polynomials or whatever example you were in. And then, and then this matrix combination will actually represent A dotted with itself for that A. And this is greater than zero because we're in fact told that we're dealing with an inner product. These are inner products of those, of those vectors. So it came from an inner product. So any, for any vector alpha in Rn, this combination equals the inner product of A with itself where A is this vector in the actual space. And that's why this is always greater than zero, because it always corresponds to some real vector being dotted with itself. 